Hi everyone, I'm going to continue the series on the Dutch defense with the Staunton Gambit, which is probably the most fun of all uh, replies White could go for against the Dutch defense. And it's very aggressive, very double-edged, not completely sound if Black knows what he is doing. But on the other hand, it's extremely easy for Black to go wrong, and White has several options uh, at his disposal which could put Black on the, on the back foot. So this is the opening position. First, let's talk about uh, Howard Staunton. So he was born in 18, 1810, the beginning of the 19th century, died in 1874. Uh, he was a chess master, not a very strong player, but for the time he, he was one of the strongest uh, in the world. He was considered to be the strongest player in the world at the beginning of the 19th century. And most uh, notably, he is, he is known for the Staunton chess set, which is the tournament standard chess set today. You're required to use it in serious tournaments. The, the fun thing is that it wasn't designed by, by Howard Staunton. It was only promoted by, by Howard Staunton. It was actually designed by Nathaniel Cook. And yeah, he, Staunton was the organizer of the, of the first major tournament in 1851, uh, and he was, well, a strong, a strong player. Known for mostly for the chess set, but also for the gambit. So after white plays pawn to d4 and black plays pawn to f5, the idea of the Dutch defense is to restrict white from expanding further with pawn to e4. So the pawn on f5 serves a great purpose, and it's sort of an improved King's Indian, considering that in most King's Indian attacks black wants to play f5, but black doesn't have the lack of space you usually get with modern openings, so f5 is a useful move. And by playing e4, white tries to uh, rid black of all the advantages of f5 and leave him with all the weaknesses, because of course f5 leaves this diagonal weak, it leaves this diagonal weak, it leaves the 7th rank weak. So if the f5 pawn is gone from the board, well then black has weaknesses and no central control. Now, what can black do against this? Declining the gambit is possible, but it's not at all popular, and it's basically not a good move. Uh, so I'll, I'll show you what could happen. So after d6, which is the way, the only sensible way to decline the gambit. I'm also going to show you three different options black could go for, which are just bad and just losing. Playing d6 transposes into the red, or a variation of the Pirts, or what is known as the Belloc defense, uh, to which white should respond with simply e takes f5, and after bishop takes f5, bishop to d3 should give white a slight edge. Of course, black has weakened himself, and after something like queen to d7, Knight to f3, knight to c6, white has already castled, all of his pieces are great. Black's pieces look weird, on the other hand, and black should continue with something like e5, continue playing aggressively. Now, another way to reach this, and actually the main way to reach this Balog defense, is after e4, d6, black plays the Pirts, white continues with the normal d4, and black has the option to play f5. This is, of course, not considered to be one of the main lines in the Pirts, and it's basically not a good opening. Still, d6 remains the only sensible way to decline the Staunton Gambit, which, and I cannot highlight this enough, should not be declined. Okay, you should take the pawn. But let's just have a look at some other mistakes you could you could make, just to make sure that you Dutch players never, never do this. So, knight f6 seems like a sensible move. This simply loses uh, to e5, and your knight is completely restricted. You don't really want to go back, if you go to g4 or h5, I'm going to take it with the queen, so you play knight d5. And this is sort of like the uh, Aliechin or the Alekhine, where the white pawns just roll forward and the knight gets pushed around, so c4. Knight b6 or knight b4 doesn't really matter, knight b4 slightly more sensible. a3, knight to c6, f4, and next move you're playing d5 and, and basically winning the position. So knight f6 also bad. Uh, knight of six shouldn't be played. Another option you have is playing d5. Excuse me, d5, uh, which seems to challenge the e4 square some more, but again, not a good move. e takes d5, and if queen takes d5, you develop the knight for free, so queen takes d5 is not good. Uh, instead, black should play knight of six. This is similar to the accelerated panov in the Karo Khan. 
but after knight f6 white simply plays bishop b5 check with a winning position this is more than plus two after bishop d7 queen e2 defends the bishop uh, let's say bishop takes b5 queen takes b5 the b7 pawn is hanging and after queen d7 queen takes b7 queen takes d5 you can play queen c8 check and queen d8 queen f5 should be should be good enough black's position is completely destroyed okay and the the final bad option is playing e6 which loses to ef5 ef5 and simply knight f3 black's king side is completely destroyed uh, has no good moves. So after e4, after the Staunton Gambit, black should take. Now, uh, white has several options. Uh, we are going to have a look at a few of them. Uh, most of them branch out on move 4. Uh, on move 3, white should simply continue with knight to c3 attacking the pawn, and black has nothing better but to play knight f6 defending the pawn. One variation I would like to mention instead of knight c3, which is not good, is f3. And f3 is, well, a sideline which black has an easy response to, and that's pawn to d5. I should mention that in most cases black is better in the Staunton Gambit, however, Many sidelines lead to an adv advantageous position for white. This is not one of them if white knows what he's doing. But when we look at the main line, and black should learn the main line, black is simply better. Uh, mostly after f3 you play d5 defending the pawn, and you don't mind this pawn structure if f takes, e takes. f3 is designed to provoke uh, e takes f and knight takes f, giving white a huge lead in development and a much better pawn structure for a cost of a pawn, which is nothing. So you shouldn't take, you play d5. Uh, white continues knight c3, threatening to take, and now after knight f6, you are going to uh, transpose into a position that we are going to be looking at where white plays f3 on move 4. So we will continue from there. Just remember that if white plays f3 on move 3, you still play d5. Okay, but white should play knight c3. And after knight f6, we now have, excuse me, three options for, for white, three sensible options for white, which keep enough pressure in the position. Bishop g5 is the main line. f3 is called Blackmar's second gambit uh, after Mr. Blackmar. And then g4 is called the Tartakawa variation, which I would actually recommend for white. It's very hard to meet for black if black doesn't know what he is doing. So let's have a look at the sidelines first, and then we will uh, analyze bishop g5 in depth, because that's what you Dutch players are going to be seeing most of the time. Let's have a look at g4 first. So d4, f5, e4, Staunton, Gambit, f, e, accepted, knight c3, knight f6, and white continues g4. Now what's the idea of g4? The idea of g4 is to dislodge the f6 knight and basically win back the e4 pawn without any consequences. So black has a difficult choice to make. There are two options. You can prevent g5 with h6, or you can defend the e4 pawn with d5, allowing g5, but when the knight moves, you still have the pawn on e4. Actually, h6 is the main move, uh, and d5 is considered to be a mistake. It's not losing, but it's a mistake. After d5, white continues g5, the knight has nothing better but to go to g8. You don't want to block in your bishop. And after knight g8, white continues f3. Now, the reason why g4 is a strong move is that you get to open lines extremely quickly, while at the same time, the lines to black king are to black's king are open, but his pieces are not out, and he has no easy way to attack nor to defend. In this position, there is nothing better but to take because if you don't take, you don't have knight f6. I'm just going to win my pawn back with a better position. So e f3. You could take with the knight, but queen f3 is considered much stronger. Immediately looking at d5, also looking at f7. Now knight c6. Uh, taking on d5 is not good because your d4 pawn would fall and together with it there would be extreme pressure on c2 so don't be tempted to go for the second pawn straight away instead you play bishop b5 and now you can see how rapid white's development is of course in exchange for that the black position is this the white the white's king position is destroyed but if we look at it from a human perspective a human will have a very hard time playing black e6 developing your bishop knight g to e2, defending the pawn finally, 
And now knight e7, black tries to develop, you castle kingside, I know this looks scary. You could also go for queenside castling, but this is simply better, threatening queen f7. Knight f5 is the defense, and now knight g3. Uh, here, of course, you, you cannot take the pawn because queen f7 would be mate. Uh, so this challenges the knight, bishop d6, and in this position, black had nothing better but bishop d6, giving up a pawn, but after knight takes f5, Black should castle, and this now gets very complicated. I've studied these lines somewhat because I plan to play the Staunton Gambit myself, and I plan to play the g4 line, and also I play the Dutch with black, so if I meet this, then I want to be prepared. After knight h6, if I turn on the engine, the engine says minus 0 0.3, so black is only slightly better, but this is very hard to play. After g takes h6, the engine is just going crazy. It sees many different options, none of them it likes for white, and black is better in each line. But this is the trickiest way for white to play, and after something like queen to g2, well, you're threatening a lot of stuff. For example, if knight d4, then, then this is game over. So, yeah, a scary position. So after g4, d5 is a mistake for black, because white could go for extremely sharp lines, but it's still playable, it has been played on the highest level. Instead of that, h6 should be played, simply preventing pawn to g5. That being said, g5 can still be played, it's a sideline, not a good sideline, but playable, after g5, hg5, bishop g5, d5, pawn to f3, black is considered better, bishop f5, Queen e2, putting pressure on, on e5, something like knight c6, and castles queen side. Again, gives black a very hard position to defend. But if you want to listen to the engine, and if you play like an engine, then, then you will win. But on, for humans, I would rather be white here. After h6, though, the main line is pawn to f3, simply challenging the pawn, and black now defends. And now h3 defending g4, so that you can take on, on e4, knight c6, normal development, f4, d4, whenever f4 happens you take with the d pawn, that's the reason why you played d5. Your knight could sit on d5 comfortably and even if you lose the e4 pawn, it was your extra pawn. Okay, bishop e3, defending the pawn, e5, this is the, the key move and this is why I believe black has an advantage after h6, because after d takes e5, Queen takes d1, check. Rook takes d1, knight takes e5. Black's position is simply perfect. These knights control everything, and I just, I would like to be black. After knight b5, there's actually no issues here. You play bishop b4, and after c3, you play bishop a5. After, let's say, knight f4, you can continue knight d3, check, and I think I think black is slightly better here. So that's, that's g4, a very tricky way for white to play of course, probably out of all three, if you've played the Staunton Gambit already, g4 is best, because it creates most complications. The idea of the Staunton Gambit is to complicate the position and make life hard for black. Make every move hard to make. You, you make black waste time, you make black think while you know what you're doing and you, you are prepared. So g4, if you know it, great option. Let's have a look at f3. After f4, knight c3, knight f6, uh, you can play f3 straight away. As we said, the, the normal response is d5. Uh, there are a couple of options for black, but none of them are really good. Uh, all give white an immediate justification for the Staunton Gambit. So remember that d5 is the only move. Let's just have a quick look at the sidelines, which are bad for black. So firstly, uh, e takes f3, knight takes f3. This was the reason we played f3 with white. After g6, bishop g5, bishop g7, bishop to d3, white is simply better. Black castles, white castles, and white has given up a pawn, but he has more space in the center, he's controlling some very important squares, his pieces are perfectly poised for an, for an attack, so after something like d5, queen to d2, if you manage to trade off this bishop, this could become scary quickly. Uh, black has to fight for central control somehow, has to get in e5 sometimes, somehow, but after okay, one, all of white's pieces are working, and if you can manage h4 
and h5 opening up the position then things are getting are going to get scary for for black so that's e takes f3 after f3 knight c6 is the second bad option after knight c6 you simply play e takes f4 and after e5 you don't continue d5 you play e takes uh, d takes e and after knight takes e knight f3 and now your knight is attacked you don't really want to play d6 knight takes d takes queen takes queen king takes queen that would be bad so you take on f3 developing white screen and now you can see that once this bishop gets to either b5 or c4 and you castle king side there's going to be immediate pressure uh, on on the f on the f file also after e5 queen h5 could be very tricky so sometimes you want to play bishop d3 in fact so let's say bishop to b4 uh, you can continue bishop d2 on pinning first that's considered fine uh, and now e5 and black's position i think is simply collapsing you castle queen side and this is complete chaos so again, after f3, knight c6, not a good move. Another bad move is e3, which white should just take. Whenever black advances with e3, you just take, and fine, you don't have a square for your knight, but you'll play bishop c4, knight, D, knight g to e2, and it will be okay. So after f3, d5, the principled move. White takes f4. Whenever white takes f4, you take with the d pawn, and now bishop to g5, and we have now come to the position which i was talking about when when white played f3 on move three black continues bishop f5 you continue bishop c4 black continues knight c6 the moves are simple to find in this position e6 you have to play e6 uh, white castles king side black plays bishop to e7 and now we play queen e1 and and i would like to stop here with the variation because variations are well, non-existent theoretical variations, basically. But the idea is that you want to get your queen to h4 somehow, and you want to break through. Sometimes g4 is a move you would like to play, getting the bishop away from the f-file. Sometimes your rook goes to d1, sometimes it goes to e1, sometimes your queen goes to f2, sometimes to, to, to g3. And, well, basically you have to play for an attack. You are worse if you don't. So f3... I would say worst of all three options, uh, white has on move 4. So let's have a look at the main line. d4, f5, Staunton Gambit, accepted, knight c3, knight f6, bishop g5. The idea of this, of this move is clear, you want to get rid of the knight and win your pawn back. So a couple of options. Um, black could play knight c6, which is the main move. Uh, black could also continue with a couple of options. Some of them are bad, some of them are okay. B6 is the least playable sideline. This is just bad because after f3, bishop to b7, f takes e4, knight takes e4, knight takes e4, bishop takes e4, and knight to f3. White has a big lead in development and many lines open for his pieces, while black species will have a very hard time developing and this bishop is very strong so after knight c6 bishop to d3 trading off black's only really active piece this should be better for white again castling king side or queen side is possible uh, the pressure is extremely hard to face if you for example blunder with h6 then, then mate so b6 not a good move e6 slightly dubious you can just win the the e4 pawn and after bishop e7 just trade everything off really no issue here this is an improved exchange french for white while black is playing a weird position without an f pawn so makes no sense at all to play e6 if you ask me g6 g6 is okay you continue with f3 d5 f takes d takes and queen to d2 the idea is if if bishop g7 then you castle queen side and if castles king side then bishop h6 and this should be a very strong position for for white a great attacking position where h4 h5 and and checkmate and finally another another sideline i would like to mention is c6 which is a solid sideline, uh, which you again counter with f3. The idea of c6 is to support the d5 pawn, but more importantly to give your, your queen the a5 square. And now the bishop is attacked, you have to be careful, uh, so you don't have time to win the pawn. So queen to d2 defending and e5 breaking the center open. So 
counterplay for black, but I would say not enough. Uh, after d takes e5, queen takes e5, castle screen side again. White has a very strong position, and of course the engines give this as better for black as they usually do when white when white deviates from the main line and also in the main line, but much easier for white to play. Now let's let's have a look at the main line. Uh, knight c6 is the idea in the main line, and now you could take the knight and take the e4 pawn. That's considered imprecise. the The main move is d5, and that forces the knight away. Knight to e5, and now there are two moves: queen d queen e2 or queen to d4. Eventually, they all give black a better position if black knows what he is doing. Queen d4 is the main move, queen e2 is the sideline attacking the pawn. And now whatever, whichever one of these two moves white plays, black plays knight f7 attacking the bishop. And against queen e2 uh, and knight f7 you take the bishop, black always takes with the e-pawn. Knight takes e4 threatening a discovered check and queen e7 stopping that and now d6. Uh, you can take with the knight which I think is, is better, you can play queen e6, which is slightly more popular, giving white a bigger chance for an advantage. Let's say knight takes d6, and now knight takes d6, check, c takes d6, castles, queen side, queen takes queen, bishop takes queen. Extra pawn for black, and the bishop pair for black, but these two bishops are just dreadful, and the engine says black is better. If black manages to develop, then black is better. But for the moment, I would have white. In any quick time control, I would have white. In most tournament games, I would probably also choose white. So that's queen e2. And queen d4, which is the main move, immediately puts pressure on the knight, which wants to go to f7 anyway. And now, again, we exchange the bishop. e takes, and knight takes e4. Now the difference is that you don't have pressure along the along the e file so black has time for the move that gives him equality and this is the key point in, in the main line black plays f5 and drives this knight away from the center this pawn is about to be defended by the bishop once the d pawn moves and i i think this is a very strong move knight g3 and g6 defending immediately of course you cannot take the rook because the knight defends the bishop is eventually coming to g7 before it's going to get to h6 using the fact that white has to castle queenside so after castles queenside bishop h6 check f4 is considered to be the only move that keeps white in the game now castles kingside let's say knight f3 and bishop to g7 this, according to the engines, let me not lie, is minus one for black, minus 1.1. But this is the reason why white plays the Stonton Gambit, and this is what you want, basically. If, if you are playing a standard tournament game, both sides have 90 minutes on the clock, black is going to get in time trouble before white. That's almost certain. White could blunder, white could lose, fine. But this is very hard for black to play. All of white's pieces are aiming towards the king's side. So you continue queen d2, saving your queen. And white, black starts his own counterattack because he has no better options. Uh, this pawn should not, not be taken. I've tried and after rook b8 it's very hard to defend. So if you take rook b8, the bishop moves and then yeah, it just doesn't work. So after b5 you play king b1, uh, rook b8 anyway and now h4 and now we can see what's what's going on uh white is going to play h5 play h takes g black is going to try to mate white on b2 so queen f6 the most sensible move uh, c3 the best defense and after if b4 is played then you play c4 the queen the queen defends b2 so it's only about who's quicker and after h5 black's attack is not quick enough white is much quicker although black is better and I would rather be white the engine would rather be black this position is very complicated b4 c4 a4 hg hg let's say queen to d4 trading queens is an option if you don't play queen to d4 then it gets really scary because after for example bishop e2 b3 a3 now there are going to be 
many issues in this position. You can play bishop a6, rook e8. Sometimes you can uh, play bishop f8, sacrifice here and get a passed pawn. White's attack is not quick enough now, so the tables have turned. So I think white is the one who would like to trade queens now. Positionally you are okay. You, you have two good squares which you can use. If d6 is played then you continue c5. Objectively, black is better, but what do you want? You play the Staunton Gambit. So this main line, again, I think is interesting for white, but I would recommend playing g4. So let's let's go through that just for a second before I finish the video. So after d4, f5, e4, f takes, knight c3, knight of 6, g4. And, and as I said, black has two bad options or, or very hard choice d5 or h6 both i think are very interesting for for white so i would recommend that you study this line if you play the Staunton gambit if you play the dutch learn all three learn f3 g4 and bishop g5 okay i hope you got something from the video let me know what you think and stay tuned for more chess bye bye